When you think about the Bible and creation, most people are immediately drawn to Genesis and how long the time scales were, what was going on on this day, what was going on that day, was it millions of years, was it thousands of years. But rather than get caught up in the details or the specific aspects of what's going on in the creation account in Genesis 1, when you look at what the Bible has to say about creation throughout the Bible, some very interesting attributes of the universe as a whole emerge. And so rather than getting caught up in the details, let's look at what does the Bible have to say about the universe as a whole. And one of the best places to start is Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now there's some details that as we probe in, give us some good insight into what the universe ought to look like. First, it's important to look at that this isn't God, say, or that the Bible saying that God created the heavens and then God created the earth. It's actually God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, it's, a, it's a compound biblical word, or Hebrew word, if you, would say, if you will. So it would be, uh, in, in modern terms, we would say, in the beginning, God created the universe. And so as we look at what does it mean for God to create, uh, we look at that word create, and it's actually the Hebrew word bara. And when you look at what does that Hebrew word bara mean, it has a couple of very interesting connotations. First, it's a word only used of divine activity. So this is God, the maker of the heavens and the earth, God the creator, uh, who is at work doing this. That is his direct work that brings the universe into existence. And when we look at the word for created, we also get that it is God bringing into existence something completely new, something that did not exist before. And it's where Christians get the doctrine of creation ex nihilo, creation out of nothing. God didn't refashion some pre-existing some stuff. God brought the universe, something completely new, into existence. The universe didn't exist, and the universe did exist. Or another way of saying it is that if we were to track the universe back in time, we would run into a boundary where space, time, matter, and energy cease to exist. And if we wanted to put a nice scientific term to this, we would say that the universe has a singular beginning to it. And as we continue to look through the Bible, we can go look at what is arguably the most talked about attribute of the universe, that is the cosmic expansion. For example, if we go look at Isaiah 44, 24, I, the Lord, am the maker of all things, stretching out the heavens by myself. And it's not just Isaiah that refers to this stretching out of the heavens. Multiple biblical authors, Job, Psalm, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zechariah, all refer to this. In fact, if we go and look at, say, Job 9.8, who it talks about God, who alone stretches out the heavens. Or we go look at Psalm 104.2. Talks about uh, as the psalmist is praising God, he's saying, You are the God who are covering yourself with light as with a cloak, stretching out the heaven like a tent curtain. Or Jeremiah, as he's talking uh, and prophesying and talking to the nation of Israel, saying about God, It is he who made the earth by his power and by his understanding, he stretched out the heavens. Or go to Zechariah, Zechariah 12.1, the Lord who stretches out the heavens. So we've got multiple biblical authors talking about this heavens being stretched out, stretched out like a tent, or, or uh, that the God is stretching out the heavens. And in fact, sometimes it's referred to as the stretching out is done in the past. Sometimes the stretching out is being referred to as continual and ongoing. And so there's a lot of detail that can be probed there. But the most important thing I want to get across is that not only do, does the Bible talk about a universe that has a singular beginning, the Bible also talks about a universe that is undergoing cosmic expansion. It's not just static everything out there, that the universe is indeed expanding. And so when we look in uh, at the third attribute, and this one theologically has some very important implications, we see a universe that is described with constant laws of physics. For example, in Jeremiah 33, 25, it says, Jeremiah is addressing the nation of Israel, prophesying to them, and it says, he says, Thus says the Lord, if my covenant for day and night stand not, and the fixed patterns of heaven and earth I have not established, he then goes on to say that if these things are not true, then Israel could doubt God's trustworthiness in fulfilling his promise, specifically the promise to keep a king from Israel on the throne of David. And so God's trustworthiness, his reliability, his ability to keep his promises is likened to the constancy of the laws of physics. In fact, we go look other places like Colossians where uh, the universe, all things are held together by Christ. That 
we, we tend to think that God borrowed some laws of physics and used them to govern the universe, when in reality, the Bible talks about a universe that if God were to withdraw his sustenance of creation, the universe would just simply cease to be. And so we live in a universe that has these constant laws of physics. In fact, it's the constancy, or it's the laws of physics that determine day and night and God's covenant for day and night and how the fixed patterns of heaven and earth behave. And so what we see as the laws of physics are actually a reflection of how reliably, how consistently, how dependably God governs and sustains and maintains the universe. And so we live in a universe which has a singular beginning, that if we trace it back, there's a boundary where space, time, matter, and energy cease to exist. We live in a universe that is expanding. It's not just this static entity that God put out there, but it's dynamic, growing, expanding, getting larger. And we live in a universe that's governed by constant laws of physics. In other words, that we can, be, we can trust that the laws of physics that we measure today are the same laws that are gonna be in operation next week and thousands of years into the future, and they're the same laws that have governed the universe since it came into existence uh, billions of years ago. Now, if we put all three of these attributes together, we find that the Bible describes a universe with a singular beginning, continuous cosmic expansion, governed by constant laws. We think multiple biblical authors affirmed these attributes thousands of years ago, thousands of years before we had the scientific tools to go measure the universe and see what it actually behaves like. We find the biblical authors talking about this, and these describe a Big Bang universe. Now that's remarkable. Thousands of years ago, the biblical authors were describing a Big Bang universe. Thousands of years later, as we've developed the scientific tools, we go out and measure that we live in a universe that has a singular beginning. We live in a universe that's undergoing cosmic expansion. We live in a universe that's governed by co constant laws of physics. We live in a Big Bang universe. Now, some would argue that the Big Bang is just some uh, atheist scientist trying to get away from the implication of a beginning or a creator. But in reality, the Big Bang is the Bible or is the biblical description of the universe. It's the scientific description of the universe. And so the Big Bang is actually one of the most powerful tools Christians have to affirm the validity of the scriptures. And so rather than being scared or afraid of the Big Bang, we ought to appreciate it for the great tool it is and realize that it gives us great confidence that we do actually have the authentic word of God because he accurately described the universe both in his scriptures and in the universe in which we live.